pretty strong lane. Yeah, it is. And I don't think you have enough to like threaten Weaver in lane anyway. You'll probably just go like this game specifically because you have like Luna and Pango as your cores. You probably just go max Shockwave. Um, you could still go the Empower if you think like you're going to have more time to farm. But I think with a Huskar, you're going to want the burst damage that comes out from a level four Shockwave. So we will have to see. I am so excited for this game. For those of you who are just tuning in, it is the grand finals here of the South American qualifiers. It is Heroic versus a Starbucks. We are tied 1-1 after a really solid performance from both teams. We're going to see a smoke from uh, each of them as Starbucks drawing the line to the enemy triangle. We've seen them actually do a pretty cheeky wrap around right next to the tier 1 tower, if I'm not mistaken. That resulted in them getting like three kills. And just won them the game, and they might be doing the same wraparound right now. They are. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately for them, they're not going to find their target. But yeah, they chop through the trees here. Keeps their smoke going. And they will make it into the enemy triangle. Smoke will pop, and they walk right into the Watcher, though. So Heroic knows. <laughs> You definitely want to attempt this type of play, I'd say, since, I mean, we're talking about how strong this Huskar could potentially be and, like, Weaver could be, but if you find that first blood, we've seen that change these matchups so much, and Dark Mago, I've, especially, is praying, like, please, guys, please help me find a first blood. I need it. I don't yeah. want to get Huskard, man. Like, you got to help me out, guys. So, they try, but Heroic ended up on the other side, so... We're just going to see the uh, normal lanes. Well, I say that. We got a lot of heroes coming up top. Yeah, KJ. KJ going not going to risk it. Yeah, he's like, nope, I take it back. You can have it. Yeah, it's uh, typically not worth risking your life for these bounty runes. Yeah, it's going to be 2-2 two -two on the runes as K1 and Sakuchi's up for the top. All right. Into the lanes we go. Divide Llama ends up going uproar here. I think this is fine for the lane. He's going to have a tough time to start, I think. Oh, well, maybe this disruption. Oh, no. He's got uproar, though. Oh, boy. He trample. Your... It's close. The slow is not enough, though. So, yeah, he's fine. I mean, this just means MNZ gets, like, the dream start. It's true. Yeah, he's going to deny the full wave. He'll see us the full wave. That is very good for him. But your uh, Grimstroke's going to have a hard time coming to this lane, and KJ might just get a solo kill here. He's going to bring him very low with these illusions. He's a couple more auto attacks. Down to 11 HP. It's One not going to be enough. Oh, it was so close. So, I mean, I mean... He's just out of the lane. He's going to deny. He has to. Yeah, you can't afford to TP, so he has to deny to creeps. It's kind of worth it with how good of a start you're giving the Luna, but... It's going to be a long respawn here at level one for him. I kind of think it's fine. I mean, Emmons, is having such a good start, and then he's going to have, like, two points in the passive. Grimstroke's going to be level one, but have all that bonus damage. You used a ton of mana on KJ. He's got the clarity. I guess the lane is pushing out. I missed how that happened. So maybe this is Divide Llama's chance to try to catch up a little bit. Luckily, though, the hard camp is blocked. So they are not going to be able to get a pull here at the two minute. Oh, is it going to respawn? Okay, it does. Really nice D ward there from KJ. But yeah, this lane pushing definitely hurts MNZ. Uh, mid lane, speaking of hurting, Dark Mago has been on fire for the last like minute straight. Doing great in CS though. Wow, shocker. Pangolier CSing in lanes he shouldn't win? Don't worry, we nerfed Swashbuckle. It only does more damage now. I think it's like as, my mind. Yeah. I think as analog picks up more levels, this should get a little easier for him. But I am a bit surprised that it's this extreme to start. Having said that, not really much of a Huskar player, so I don't know how these like first few waves and these exact matchups are supposed to go. It's kind I of definitely standard. Think if you're... You start Berserker's Blood, usually. Yeah. Because, yeah, you don't want to, like, 
just lose all your HP and then just die to a swashbuckle. So a lot of times you just start Berserker's Blood and you don't have the wave clear. Uh, the other option in certain matchups is to open Inner Fire, but it doesn't help against Pangolier really. Well, CS right, relatively even across the board though, right? Like, it's not really favoring one team or the other. Not yet. Yeah, but I think this is where it starts to build up a bigger difference. As you get those levels in the Huskar, MNZ is going to start picking up more levels in the, the passives. I think he'll be able to farm pretty quickly. I feel like I'm going to take my eyes off this mid lane for one second and a hero is going to die. So, well, Michael's we'll see. here. Yeah. We've seen this How a lot. Times a lot have of we early seen pressure. <laughs> yeah. But this is a tough one. It's hustle. Yeah, He's going to the Bat Rider. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he just he needs to make sure it. that he gets a rune right on the Pangolier. Like, he cannot mm -hmm. play this lane without getting a water rune. Ooh, I think Analog pinged out this Observer back here. He's like, like, hey, he did this before last time. I took a quick look at the replay. They're bringing TPs. Dude, this is the time when you can turn it, Michael. He does have a blood grenade as well. He's going to slow him up. Swashbuckle ends up missing from Dark Mago. And Schofield snipes him with a flare instead. Oh, man. Michael, you got to be careful, dude. You could die to this. He's going to respect your coming in. He's already happy with the Pango kill. Bruh. Down his swash hurts so bad. Yeah. I wonder if they would have killed him. It's only level 2 Swashbuckle. He does have a Blightstone. I mean, maybe the Bat Rider commits more if he gets the if he gets the kill, right? Or if he hits yeah, the swashbuckle there. Dark Mago might just start creep dragging, honestly. He is in a really bad spot. <laughs> Analog knows he's just running over. He's trying to just create chaos in the lane. He knows he can't play this lane regularly anymore, especially after that kill, because Analog is three quarters of the way to level six. And as soon as level six comes out, your lane is dead. Like, there's no chance you have to play this, so. I like this. Good attention to the mid lane here from both teams. But we can really talk about the side lanes now as uh, Weaver, top of the CS. Doing fairly well against the Magnus, but not slowing down Sacred too much. Sacred's been getting some farm. When I think about... Well, we've seen a lot of supports just come camp mid. Six minutes approaching, we're likely to see it. Think about the safe lanes. I don't think... I don't think Weaver's at risk of dying, but I think Luna could potentially be killed by a Primal Beast, even though she's having a better start right now. I think Primal yeah. just has more kill threat, especially if a support, like, you think they're mid and suddenly they've rotated over. Like, that small difference uh, could get her killed. For now, she'll be happily farming jungle to play it safe to avoid that, and I think that's that's a good idea. Michael picks up the Amplified Damage. Running out of bat, right? Or uh, Clockwork. Usually you don't see that, but... Guess with this extra damage. Ooh, two bounty runes? That's uh, nice. Bottom lane, Michael's KJ capping real body blocks too. That's sick. You should have known better. Force TP out mid. All right. So at the moment, the Huskar is doing its job. It is shutting down this Pangolier. He has a pretty sizable net worth advantage in the mid lane. He has a pretty sizable XP advantage. Normally, Pango would like to be able to fight for the runes with, you know, that six minute rune with his ult, but not going to get that opportunity. Top lane, Sacred falling incredibly low. Schofield thinking of wrapping around, but won't be able to find the kill. As the seven minute wisdom runes will spawn. It's going to go one to one on those again. Radiance top tower is under attack. Okay. I mean, overall, he he's got his six. He's, way. he's got to try to find a kill with that rolling thunder, but Weaver is going to be such a hard kill. So maybe got to go to that bottom lane. They have two wards placed down here, though. So they'll see Pango's rotations if he comes down to this bottom half. By Llama getting aggressive onto Yor. That is level five. So three points in the trample. Also grabs a casual wind lace. Level 6 now available as he goes for the Pulverize. Healing Lotus at the ready if he needs to. That's a great usage of that timing. 
Schofield just messing with Dark Mago in the meantime. He running forced Rolling Thunder out. Yep. So we talked about that recovery mechanic. You don't kill Pango, but you're just limiting his options. He's not having a good time in the lane. I'm running at him in the jungle, and now he can't even rotate with his ultimate. Perhaps this is how you shut down the Pango. KJ now here to block camps too. Yeah, this is... He's just taking any like farm areas that the Pango could feel safe taking, right? So this hard camp, usually a, a staple for the mid laner. Has no opportunity to grab it. Top lane, they make a play onto the, or I guess the Weaver is making a play onto the Magnus, gets forced to time lapse instead. But overall, 3k gold lead for Heroic. It is slowly starting to add up here. They're looking for Schofield. Oh, nice use of the cogs. Dude, double mana burn onto Dark Mago here. Michael gonna try and run him down. Even bring in the Magnus as well. Schofield, tanky, but not tanky enough. They will find the kill. Ends up going to the Pango. He needs these types of finds. At the same time, that's four heroes killing Clockwork, which does not feel that great in terms of map efficiency. Huskar's going to enter this phase where he just farms. It, it's a little funny. Like, if you think of old Huskar, you used to, like, dominate lanes and just, like, play insanely aggressive around Armlet. But now it's a little bit delayed. You, you win your lane, you tend to see him farm Ancients for a little bit to hit some bigger items like Sanj, and then the aggression starts. What it allows is your supports to start picking up a lot of early levels by camping mid in your place. And Shadow Demon will definitely make use of that. Yeah, absolutely. I think for the most part, they're pretty happy with what's going on. 10 minutes, Power Rune's going to spawn. Dark Mago with the Rolling Thunders looking for KJ. Doesn't manage to get to the Illusion Rune. So they should be able to pick up the Shadow Demon. A defensive mm. disruption, but Pulverize coming out from the Lama doing some work. Analog's already cleaned up one hero, but he doesn't even get oh. KJ. Divai Lama, dude. Doing Bat so Rider, flame much break. damage. Nerfed. Flame Break nerf making a big change there as it doesn't find the kill onto the Shadow Demon. They get a D ward adding insult to injury. Oh, Your mid tower is dead. Yeah, I don't know how you. Like, you have no Rolling Thunder for this. Your Magnus would have to come mid, I think. Because he can just arm with Toggle this for eternity. Tower. Yeah, that's the speedrun strats. Now he doesn't want to feed his life away to like a TP rotation behind trees and then like gets nuked. So he's just going to back off. It's not his timing. He's just happy he got some kills. He wasn't even planning for that. So he's going to go straight back to the ancient farmings we talked about. Yeah, KJ making more stacks for him. I mean, your, your timing is definitely that Sanj into like one item, whether it be BKB, probably BKB, eventually an Aghanim Scepter. We're going to see another engagement here in the jungles. Clockwork. He's kind of just scouting, trying to cause chaos, making it difficult for Dark Mago. Unfortunately, they brought MNZ as well. He did get two really good, or I guess an, another ward. They already had one here, but a second ward now placed here. And uh, even deeper into the jungle, Yord does not manage to find it with his sentry. What's Weaver going? Maelstrom... We were not as fast of a farmer as the Luna, so I'm not too surprised to see him a bit behind. But I think he's still pretty happy with where he's at. Yeah, Baker's gonna I would get agree. a blink. He's still a few hundred away. But maybe they can start making some plays around that, like a big blink RP, pango roll. Yeah, you know, maybe like a Luna glaives bouncing around. I mean, one big fight, and they would recover here. Maybe it starts with a rotation down here. Looking at Divai Lama. Can't yeah, stop no this onslaught, No way to cancel though. that onslaught. He's going first item Yules. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, on the Primal Beast? Interesting. Yeah. I mean, well, okay, I say first item. He already has Blade Mail, but now he's going Yules. So, not a standard build that we see on this hero very often. I'm trying to think of... Of why? I guess maybe to stop the Bat Rider, as that hero can be very annoying. Yeah, maybe Bat Rider or the or instant Mag. cast on Magnus interrupt.
Pango roll, which going to get off just in time here. Roll away. Again, though, you don't feel too bad. We didn't kill Pango, but he didn't have a good laning stage. We're running at him in the jungle and blocking camps, and Luna also wants to farm the jungle. And every time he's rolling, like, a lot of them are defensive. By your, It was nice knowing yeah. you. Right? So right, Pango is just not... Yeah, he's just not getting any recovery through all of this. And now yeah. you just get to take this tier one because, you know, like, yeah, there's no there's no roll. Magnus, not at blink, or they think. Actually, they do see it now. So the blink has been revealed by these deep observers that Schofield has been placing. Yeah, they're pinging it. Yeah, they're pinging it like, hey, by the way, guys, blink dagger on the Magnus. Hey, one, if you get caught by this blink RP, I swear, <laughs> I've warded for you. I have won your lane. So help me. I will kick you. <laughs> He will get a real nice pizza party. No, I'm just, it's uh, <laughs> it's true though. Like you, you scout this blank dagger. This timing could be completely wasted if uh, they don't manage to find the opening. And he's positioning really well to kind of dodge this one out. Schofield is being super annoying. Gets the hook shot to safety here to get away from this bat rider. Does not want to give anything up here to the side of a Starbucks. Very low kill game compared to what we've been seeing previously, but it is kind of both teams playing their timing. During this all, Huskar doing the classic solo Roshan, and that is, uh, that's great. Uh, the only way you ever die to Roshan is under triple bash, if I'm not mistaken, nowadays. Divide Llama mid lane has a shield rune and a, just a lot of HP. Demonic Purge will come out onto this Pangalari. He has a swashbuckle to get the safety. Ends up connecting onto Schofield. Big blink RP from Sacred onto three. The skewer will be able to finish off the clockwork and a solar bind onto two. That's the dream. Three heroes dead on heroic. Huskar stuck behind the tower all alone. His Aegis saves him the first time. He's going to try and get away for now. You do lose the Pango solo to this primal beast. But Weaver joins at the worst possible moment. I, I I don't think you can actually ask for anything better than that. That is the best first blink ult you could possibly get in a game versus a Huskar. And all three lanes... Well, okay, maybe Luna was doing fine. But the other two lanes were very, very bad. I, I cannot believe they just found that. Very nice play here from uh, Dalai Lama bottom. It's a quick solo kill. It's funny the way he's the way he's doing. It, it's just like running through Firefly with Blade Mail, just stacking up the uh, uproar charges before going in with the trample. And he has a Yules, so again, a, a very different build from what we're seeing. Divine Llama is one of these people who is very creative from the off lane. I mean, when we interviewed him, I think in the last tournament, we we're like, "Why did you do this?" And he's like, "I don't know. It just made sense to me. It seemed very very easy." And we're like, "Okay, I guess." <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> some some players have a very like well thought out. This is exactly why I'm doing this. And you know, maybe he just didn't want to share it. But other many Dota players at the highest level are like, I don't know. It's just like a feeling which you develop from playing it long enough. So it's always interesting to see like what what players are what. Uh, yeah, I think I need a top tower here. Luna's getting scary. I mean, she's yeah, been farming she's well this whole time. Has her Manta just got some free kills in that mid lane after that fight, which I always painting it as a potential comeback. The blink RP, AOE stuff, Luna Glaze, but I didn't actually think they would find it on so many core heroes. But Luna's gonna get her BKB. I'm guessing maybe a Scotty after that could be pretty good. Though maybe you don't want to give a Scotty copy to Shadow Demon. You might I'm just sure. they're gonna though, honestly. They might find her here. Oh, silence does connect onto the primal beast. Demonic purge from KJ. Soulbind is out. He's a little bit skeptical about diving in, but he pops the blade now, looking to finish this one off. He wants to dodge out the initial stun, but there's gonna be Eclipse out from MNZ and a great skewer once again into an even better lasso. Heroic getting punished. Schofield on the run. No cogs either, but does have a hook shot. He's gonna use it. And do a quick TP on out. So, good play from him. Yeah. 
I mean, Luna's looking real scary, man. You said it yourself. She does so much damage in this fight. Gets herself 750 more gold to boot as she cleans up both of those kills. And that BKB is going to be here very soon. If Heroic loses this, they're going to be kicking themselves over that mid fight. The thing with Huskar lineups is you really can't afford to give up much momentum. Otherwise, oh, uh, you have some strict timings on I have to win the lane, I got to hit these items, and then I got to like take over the game. There are counters to Huskar uh, to hurt his regen, to like prevent him from being such a pain. And that's why like every time you give up kills and team fights, like it's a big, it's a big issue. So they have lost a lot of momentum off that mid fight. All of this should have been like, Aegis should still be up right now. And they should have been able to like pressure aggressively with it. But instead, it feels like they just went back to farming, which means Luna's back to farming and everyone else is free to find kills. I grab a Shadow Demon kill here, but K1 at least will not be caught in that. As the Mage Slayer finished as well for Dark Mago, so massively reducing the damage that's going to come out in these fights with that Swashbuckle. Um, one thing I will say is, Huskar in the past used to be kind of a, well, he's good early and doesn't scale late type of hero, but I think it is a little bit of a common misconception nowadays because this hero does scale. Very scary, but uh, let's talk about the fact that they just get a blink reveal into a lasso taking down this Weaver. And now looking for more, potentially, you still have Blink RP, you still have Eclipse. Like, you are very strong without a Weaver in the fight. And no BKB yet on Analog. I don't think you can actually stop this. No, I think you were giving this up. They're making their way over, but without a Weaver, it's pretty scary. Like, only Lasso got used. You still have RP and Roll. Immediate Yules Instant catches Yules. the uh, Magnus really well done, but that means Rolling Thunder's up. Soulbind on to two. He can't go anywhere. Analog comes in, takes a whole Eclipse himself, and they're falling fast on the side of Heroic. Four gone now as the Tier 2 cat Tower is claimed, and that is the literal worst-case scenario, dying to a Luna lineup right outside your Tier 3 Tower. You have two fortifications available. But they can oh just steal boy. Tormentor. I think they're still waiting for high ground. Wave. Yeah. Yeah. The the Shadow Demon Luna actually killed that first wait, creep wave off. That's the 14 time. minute wisdom. They're gonna wait for it to hit 21. Okay. Or Dark Mago's just gonna take it and lose out on the XP. Doesn't want to sit around any longer. Dude, this is a huge swing. Not only do they get the wisdom room, but they get the the shard on Grimstroke. Who, oh, That's such a good one. Well, can you look at Grimstroke's inventory? What he also had flying out at the time. <laughs> oh, you hate to see that. <laughs> time to sell the shard. Oh man, that is that is <laughs> so sad. You should have known better. He says. <laughs> that feels. I brutal. should have known we would have won another team fight by their tier two just as the the tormentor was spawning. Ah, oh, such an idiot. I forgot. <laughs> That moment well, when you're like you'll being take a it. good support, saving all yeah. of your money to buy that shard at exactly 15 minutes. Yeah, you'll. Yeah, yeah whatever. I was like 700 gold, I guess, for me is, you know, we Still stole good. it. Yeah, can't complain. They're going to ping their own Tormentor. Don't really want it on Batrider, but I mean, if you get it on uh, who's third? Uh, Magnus? Yeah, it's pretty. The, pretty honestly, nice. the second Shockwave is pretty sick. So, all right, it'll go to the, it'll go to Sacred. Okay, nice, easy, just like that. Uh, classic RNG. Uh, I mean, to be honest, the second Shockwave I think is a little underrated. It it just makes the slow duration so much longer from this ability, because you're like, oh, I got hit from Shockwave, and then you're like, all right, I can start moving again. And then you're like, oh, I just got hit from Shockwave again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's pretty nice for a hero like Luna who literally just wants to stand still and attack. So yeah. hopefully getting a big RP skewer next to the Luna. She pops her glaives, pops the Eclipse, BKB is like, all right, I'm just going to A-click. You guys do the rest. Keep them next to me. You're at a point now where Pango is basically taking the second highest net worth position here over the Weaver and the Huskar after... Good thing we nerfed this hero. <laughs> How many times have we said that this tournament? <laughs> I'm we nerfed Pango, guys. I'm going to keep wow. saying it for the next two years until he's nerfed enough to get out of the meta. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, they actually just this needed game, to not increase the damage on this ability. Yeah. This game, that was just a spectacular fight they found mid that brought Analog is Dark to go back into this. Rolling yeah, Thunder's no coming way. out. He does have a BKB. He's going to be forced to use it. Dark Mega with a blink there. Trying to cause some havoc, but is this deck going to turn around? I don't know if you want to do this. <laughs> RP from Sacred. You thought you had the numbers, but guess what? A Starbucks was coming with more. Schofield now just taking damage here from the Luna. Eclipse at the ready. Disruption will buy a little bit of time. They finally get the mag. A nice amount of damage coming out from Divai Lama, but... K1 on the run, time lapse back to safety. You gotta be very careful here. This Luna is very farmed at Dark Maybe. He scouts K1, gets sniped by an elusive beam, and BKB is still ready. He has not have to use it. Roll up here for the Pango Swash buckles away. There's your Eclipse. Divine Llama's dead. Triple kill now for MNC. Looking for K1. He's got no, no way out. All he has is this Sakuchi, but he cancels it by mistake, and they clean him up. An ultra kill for the Luna. What a disaster for Heroic. Not going how they wanted. Here. Okay, they, they may opt for the, the safer Roshan. Rather than force high ground, they buy back, they kill you, they get Roshan. Uh, you know what? Considering how they turned this game miraculously, they, they might be like, okay, guys, we play it safe. We get Rosh. Uh, but I, this game is looking so good for a Starbucks right now. I'm not sure you can throw this. They're going to get the Roshan banner? I mean, you can always throw, but... I don't know. I think, I think that mid fight, that was it. Yeah, that was kind of a big turning point for them for sure. Your battery in a house, a blink, four staff, sacred is closing in on a BKB. Um, MNC didn't even have to BKB in that fight. He doesn't feel under threat at all. Like the only hero he's gonna like die to uh, is gonna be like the the primal beast standing on top of him. But the primal beast had to deal with sacred and dark mago. And Roshan, number two. You got the first one on the Huskar fairly easily. And a really nice tank from Michael blocking that hook shot. In comes the Vilama. Sacred actually gets caught for a moment. He doesn't have an RP for three seconds. But look at MNZ from the low ground. He's got that 20 talent. Just doing so much work. Disarm for the moment. There's the lasso from the Batrider. Great disruption here for the moment. Onto the Huskar analog. He needs help. MNZ with the BKB. Try to just burst him down. Sacred gets the RP, but it's only onto the Weaver. Finally, Heroic. Looking like they're pulling away with this one. In comes this Grimstroke. Trying to do some work, but they get the Weaver off the silent analog. Jumping in for more. The life break catches your MNZ. Pops to the Eclipse. He still had it already, but another nice great disruption. save from KJ. He's done it twice now. Trying to keep this Huskar alive, but it's not enough. Luna is too strong. Schofield trying to run away, but he's got the nighttime vision. One Lucent Beam to finish the job and a dieback on your clockwork. Luna took that entire fight without her conda. She had the whole thing at her courier. I mean, that was, that was actually a really good fight from Heroic, all things considered. I, I thought the positioning of it worked out really well. Magnus, maybe he got a little too excited, jumped in without the RP. Uh, Luna was like on the low ground to the high ground. Like a lot of things went Heroic's way for that. But just 10k behind, right? All the buybacks from a Starbacks. Maybe that's something you can look to abuse here if you can find some kills on those heroes, which is... Uh, who was that? That was the Pango, Grimstroke. Oh, and then one of them was the Clockwork. I thought three heroes bought back on a Starbacks. I mean, if you can find some diebacks... Maybe you can start, like, chaining that. I mean, getting Pango here would be amazing if you can find him. Divai Lama is invis at the moment. Seeing a lot, but he's close by to his team. Eh, scouts the Pango. The thing is, is, like, you don't have the burst damage, right, really? You need a lot more than just the Pulverize. Huskar needs his Aghanim Scepter. Analogs, dude, she's just taking so much damage from this Luna. Oh, my lord. KJ comes go. in, gets an up and there's gonna be an Alasso catching Uskar's BKB is there. Great inner fire bursting up these heroes, at least causing some evasion, but a Soulbind just locking them down again. Hookshot in from Scofield. They're just trying to keep the Luna away from the Huskar, but they finally bring him down. You're throwing everything at this guy, but guess what? You still have an RP at the ready, just delivering the Primal Beast to his team. Sacred, what a play. Gofield trying to cut the wave. They're going to fortify. They can use this creep wave to take the mid tower and the high tower. 
the high ground tower. So here we go. A click it down, guys. It's going to take him a minute, but... Yeah, that is going to be scary. Bottom tier three is already pushing in, so they're going to have to dress to one of these lanes. I don't know if they actually go high ground. They might just keep waiting, honestly. As they're closing in on some important items, like the the Pangolier's entire Aghanim Scepter is on the Courier. So his Courier is dead for another two minutes, so they might just have to wait for that. Um, Dyer's top tower. One of the things people, maybe if you haven't heard us talk about it, the Aghanim Scepter is technically buffed for Pangolier because they increased the damage per swashbuckle, but the number of swashes per shield crash is the same. So it does even more damage than it did before. Yeah, it's looked really good. Shadow Demon has had a lot of great spells. Disruption, Demonic Purge on the right targets, but it's just not enough. Yeah. Sacred keeps finding so many good catches. It's working on and a Harpoon has... too, so he can even do it on a lower cooldown coming up here. Yeah, I was curious which one he was going to go because you have the option of going Harpoon or Ags, right? A lot of times the Harpoon is a less reliable initiation, right? Because it doesn't stun. You can BKB it. Um, if you're Huskar, you can enter fire it, right? If you're fast enough. But still gonna still gonna go for the harpoon. I think why not? You already got the uh, echo saber. Fifteen thousand gold lead for our Starboxes. We approach that thirty minute mark. I mean, your Huskar needs a lot to get into this game. He's still about. 3,000, like 2,600, 2,700 gold away from his Aghanim Scepter. It's a massive pickup, of course, getting that three-second taunt duration and the increased cast range. But I'm starting to worry that if you cast this on this Luna and she just presses Glaives, you die. I don't think you win the fight, to be honest. Oh, definitely. I, I agree. If she has Glaives going, I think you kill yourself on that. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to be real careful. Could be really good for the Pango, though. I mean, that is one thing, mm -hmm. right? If you can if you can get him before he gets roll up or uh, rolling thunder off, you might be able to like put enough damage to the Pangolier to kill him with like a single follow up. They're gonna smoke. Uh, they do have this amplified damage room on the Huskar, which will do some heavy work here. But he reveals himself in the mid lane to deal with this. I'm assuming they banner dropped mid. Yeah, they did. That's what's going on here. They're positioned really well here on a Starbox. Do it with flair. I feel like you want to wait for some of these items. Lincoln's almost done on Hector. That'd be nice. Weaver has a lot of room to grow. Had to opt for a lot of survivability items after the way this game played out, but we able to go back for damage and he'll terrorize the supports with that. Right now, it's just not fast enough. Like, I just try to do it. Who got this? Guard. Snowfield. Clockwork. So, gets jetpack. It's a nice one. Satanic and Pike finished up at the same time on Luna. They get the lasso. Great disruption. He's still in pretty deep. Analog just taking a burst of damage from the Luna as well. Soulbind will pull into the Weaver. Here comes Sacred. Nice inner fire to cancel. He didn't BKB, but Huskar, he's in no man's land again. He's dead. No, he does have a buyback. K1 trying to escape, but MNZ still has that BKB at the ready, and you still have an RP. He goes for it. He grabs Divai Lama. Primal Beast will go down. Double buybacks immediately. Nice Gleipnir helping root up this Grimstroke and find the kill. They even get another. MNZ has to TP, but the Pulverize is there. You've left them to die. You Can don't you have any help her. coming his way. Disarm for the moment, and that will be a fantastic kill. Clockwork also scouting out more on the backside. They found Divai Lama. Tries to swash Buckle away, but another Gleipnir to root him up. Can they get the Pango? Roll up is there. 
he has no way out, right? Surely he dies this time. And that will be a dieback, technically. That is a very a long, long, time. long time in between. They're going to hope for a very short Roche spawn here. Oh, uh, it's not. Middle ground. Unfortunate. Uh, otherwise, they could have gotten it here, and that would have been huge in terms of them coming back. Weaver, like from that fight, he does have his Lincolns now. I believe he's... Did he buy something? I thought he bought something. Well, he's working on the butterfly. It's going to help his damage. Oh, he just bought a crystal, oh, he has a crystal straight out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. so that's going to help the damage, which I, I think is starting to make him a, a real threat, especially as it's close to 25. Now, what's your buybacks? That's why you really wanted Roche. So the next big fight, which might just end the game from there, is the the next Roche fight. If we get another big RP into Eclipse, all that, and you get some of these diebacks, uh, you're just going to be able to run straight down and end the game as a Luna. If Heroic yeah. wins that fight, I think we keep going, right? I don't think they can end the game off a fight like that, but they'll keep this game going. Absolutely. Give themselves and they have Axe Huskar now. So, you know, he, he buys back, and it was a worthy buyback as he manages to get to his Aghanim Scepter anyway. So, I mean, I think that fight swung like 5,500 gold their way. So, very good stuff from them. Roche, please, Roche where are you? Oh, Divine Llama ends up BKBing here as Gleipnir will catch both of the supports. You're trying to get away, but is it going to be enough? K1 chasing. Actually, BKB. KB for this as well. MNC is here. There's the lasso. In comes Sacred. Can he get his RP? The Yules from Divine Llama perfectly done, but K1 is still stuck. He's getting away for the moment, but not any longer. The RP finally coming through. Analog with a really nice grab onto the Luna, though. MNC, Hurricane Pikes away. He's actually going to live. No way. Divine Llama falling low. Glimmer Cape saving him You've for the moment. Analog this Luna. jumps back in again to make sure this Luna does not survive. But it costs you four heroes. What a play from these two supports. Your and Michael just baited Smaller out so play. much. Oh, I love this. I wasn't sure if they'd feel comfortable doing this. They're like, we can win. We can win right here. He's going to commit the buyback on Luna. I don't think they're even going to do Roche. Yeah, they're just running it straight down. They know no buyback on this Huskar. I think on the Primal um, Beast primal as, well. as well. Yeah, yeah they, they double bought back for the high ground. Weaver just got enough gold for his buyback, so they'll try to mount a defense, potentially. How many fortifies do they have? They're going to have two. All right. Oh, they managed to find the clockwork. Very good grab here from Sacred. His buyback's available. But fortification number one is down, and you have a level 25 Luna. Four. So this, yeah, this solar, this lunar blessing is just huge for the team. Pango level you 25 gotta go. as well. Buyback number one coming through. Second fortification is there, but the glaives are doing the work. Weaver's buyback comes out as well. They know they still have time. They know they still have time. They force the buybacks. They will settle for the towers, and now they might just back for the Roshan. Economic the damage play. is done. I don't think they even have to. I actually think they could have ended the game. But it's, you know, I get it. You want to make sure you win. And with the with this next Roshan, it'll have a free Agadims. You're unlikely to lose from here. This is the safe play. Especially with Luna committing buyback. So put an Aegis yeah. on, on her. You'll feel a lot better. I feel like you give this Ags to Sacred, right? Would, would this not just be a great time to get a Horn Toss as well? Like, Luna's is okay, but... Is it that good? Maybe. Looks like it is, because they gave it to her. Yeah. I would have been okay with sticking it on Sacred, but I suppose you could also just kind of like throw it in between the Fountain and the Ancient and just zone off the entire enemy team as you destroy their base. Yeah, it's Could true. be kind of good. All right. So... Starbucks, they uh, they force a lot out of Heroic here as they get not only the mid lane of Barracks, but a third buyback, this one onto the Weaver, and this puts them on staggered timers, right? So you're going to see Primal Beast and Huskars come up in just about 2 minutes, 45 seconds, but now your Weaver and Clockwork are on cooldown for 6.5 minutes. So any of those kills can spell disaster for the side of Heroic at this point. Let's see if we have any 
other big items coming up? I don't think so. I mean, maybe this agonims on clockwork. So, I mean, Hero is going to have to hold this defense with what they have. And we've already seen how hard it is for them. Yeah, absolutely. You're just going to stick this Luna, BKB, Satanic, Aegis up front. And Sega's just going to wait for his, his moment. He's already yeah. found so many good engages this game. The night vision from the Luna, if she gets onto the high ground, it makes it so much better for Sacred here, too. Because, like, mm -hmm. typically, if you're heroic, you're like, oh, you know, we, we should be safe this deep into our base. They don't have wards, but Luna's bonus night vision makes a massive difference. Her Walking high ground with 500 damage on the Luna here. Nice. Watch Just Lynch. drop a zoning it. ult. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you absolutely could. They're going to try and do their best here. Schofield pops that overclocking, jumps in. They, I didn't even see what happened oh, to the Shadow Demon. He just dies to, to a glaze. single Lucid Beam. Divine Lama with the BKB. Go over the Pulverize, but Pangolier survives, and the RP from Sacred comes out. Goodbye, Heroic. No chance at all. The overwhelming damage is just way too much. MNZ just way too strong. And he's got a refresher there just to... Is good measure to this and that will be game number three going to a starbucks one step closer to the main event thick game by a starbucks special shout out to sacred finding yeah so many huge initiations this game 